There's not time for our announcements. <clears throat> and I have a card here from Brianna Krim. She's graduated from Glenn High School, and she will be attending UNC Greensboro in the fall. And along with her, we'd like to congratulate all our 2020 graduates. There's now time for our morning service. Our invitation is coming this morning from Ephesians 4, the reading from 4 through 6. That is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in the hopes of your heart. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one Father of all, and who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Let's pray. Our Father, God, we come this morning thank you for many blessings you pour upon us. Thank you, Father, for all that's come today to give thy word, and that we may be improved in our everyday living. Father, we thank you for the one that you have sent today. Thank you, Father, for them that the Lord has blessed us, Father. For all that's going around today, that these things will be healed in your place. And we'll be doing here today will be blessed to, to our sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone here to the Carver Road Church of Christ. And uh, certainly, I hope you had a good week this past week to all of our Facebook friends. Welcome uh, to our services. I still have joy, I still have joy, and all the things I've been through, I still have joy, well, I still have joy, I still have joy, and all the things I've been through, I still have joy, I still have love, I still have love, oh, and all the things I've been through. Oh, we 
And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonder wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, there's no man join himself to them. But the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes both of men and women. Thus I have read into your hearing. In the book of Acts, the chapter 5, verses 12 and 14. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of these verses. Our response of reading today is taken from 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 14. That's 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 14. I'll do the reader, you do the church, you do the unison, and pray together. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Father in heaven, we thank you for eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that we have confidence that you hear us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Let us all stand for prayer. I'm going to hide behind.
to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes. We say thank you. Thank you. You saw fit to raise us up off our beds of slumber once yeah. again. Yeah. Clothe us in our right front of mind for this. And we say thank you. Amen. We thank you for your son, who's our Lord and our Savior, Jesus yes. Christ. You gave mankind the best gift that we will ever know in the middle of our sins. Father God, we say thank you so much. We thank you, Jesus, for establishing the church, being the head of the church. Divine Heavenly Father, we know that because of your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, we're able to live the way we do in our lives. For this, we say thank you. Divine Heavenly Father, the believers, we understand and study your word daily. Know that you are with us even in the midst of a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Divine Heavenly Father, help us to have the faith. Yeah. We sing about faith. Yeah. We pray about faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talk about faith. Well, yeah. And yet, sometimes our faith is shaken. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Help us to have applied faith. Yeah. There are many examples in the Bible about applied Wow. Divine Heavenly Father, sometimes life shakes us yeah. to the core yeah. that we lose hope. Mm -hmm. Help us, Father God, to be there yeah. at the time when you have given us a lifeline. Yeah. That is through your Son, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, yeah. that our hope can be restored. Yeah. Our faith can be increased. Yeah. Divine Heavenly Father, you say in your word that the believer is supposed to be the salt of the earth, yeah. a light on a hill. Yeah. And yet, yeah. sometimes, Father God, our light grows dim yeah. because life shakes us <laughs> to our core. Yeah. Father God, you are the great physician. You help us, you heal us. Yeah. Father God, when all have gone, you'll come. Yeah. Divine Heavenly Father, give us some peace in troubling times. Yeah. Yeah. You're so good, Father God, in the midst of turmoil. Yeah. You give us some comfort yeah. Yeah. when we're in the valleys of our lives. Yeah. Father God, you're the great shepherd yeah. that's there with us. Yeah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. you know where to lead us, how to feed us, yeah. and how to give us rest and yeah. some peace. Mm -hmm. Father God, help us to restore our spirit of strong faith. Yeah. Help us to rely more on your word and apply yeah. to our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank you, Lord. for the church. Okay. This light <laughs> that is supposed to be on the hill. Mm. And yet sometimes, Father God, we allow Satan to come in and dim our lights mm -hmm. against one another. Mm. Yeah. Divine Heavenly Father, help us that are the believers to be united in our strength. Yeah. Be united in our faith. Yeah. Father God, help us to learn to love one another more. Yeah. Shape us, Father God, sometimes. Help us to have the understanding that you are in control. Yeah. You see all. Yes, you do. Father God, we like to say that you are omnipotent, yeah. omnipresent, yeah. and yet, our faith is shaken, mm -hmm. sometimes like it's not even there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We start to rely on mankind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Father God, we start to operate in out of fear. Ah. <laughs> and Father God, we have the audacity sometimes to wrap that fear around some words called logical. Ah. Mm -hmm. Help us, Father God, to understand yeah. that your thoughts are not like our thoughts. Yeah. Your ways are not like our ways. Mm -hmm. You see all that is going on in this world. Yes. Yeah. You even see our hearts yeah. in the secret chambers of our mind. Yeah. Divine Heavenly Father, you see our thoughts when others don't. Yeah. You judge us by our thoughts. Yeah. Divine Heavenly Father, help us to understand <laughs> sometimes our mouths be running but our actions be saying 
something else. Yeah. Yeah. Divine Heavenly Father, we need you in our lives. Yeah. Help us as a church yeah. to stay united and stay on your word. Amen. Yeah. Strengthen your evangelists and your ministers. Yeah. Yeah. Let them to stand up and be what you proclaim them to be. Yeah. Help them to preach and teach in a, try, in a time that is trying yeah. in this universe. Yeah. Help them to feed the, the flock yeah. and not themselves only. Yeah. Father God, we're so grateful yes, we that you placed us yeah. in this country. Yeah. Before I ask for blessing for this country, <laughs> I'd like to ask that you please forgive us well, of the sins that we have transgressed well, against thee. Yeah. Thank you so much for your mercy yeah. and your grace. Yeah. This country. Father God, we have prayed mm -hmm. that this country and the leadership, and we continue to pray for the leadership. Yeah. Lord. But yet, our leadership has turned on its citizens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Help us, Father God, that light that's on the hill yeah. for a time for us to shine mm -hmm. and not look for the leadership of politicians, yeah. but look for the leadership of Jesus Christ yeah. through your word. Yeah. We are prayed for our soldiers abroad fighting battles they don't understand. Well, and yet, yeah. our leadership have turned the soldiers on us in this country. Well, oh God, we need some help in this country. Our young folks, because, Father God, of lack of understanding, and only going by what they see, sometimes operate out of fear of what may happen to them. I pray a special prayer for our youth. Father God, help us to have some wisdom to get and talk to one. Just one. Mm -hmm. And we make up <laughs> to not give the lives up. Mm -hmm. We understand the injustice yeah. Yeah. in this country. Mm -hmm. Father God, you can never forget that you understand and you see all. Yeah. Our trust must be in thee. Yeah. Yeah. So Father God, we say thank you so much for the many blessings that you bless us with. Father God, the man servant that steps in this pool pit, week after week. Yeah. I ask a special blessing for him. Yeah. Yeah. Lord. Brother Cruz. Yeah. 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 Father, we have been criticized, <laughs> publicized, yeah. talked about yeah. in this congregation. But our leadership. Brother Gorellas, I pray that you continue to guide him yeah. and direct him yeah. as he help lead this flock here yeah. that meets at 4399 Carver School Road. Yeah. Yeah. Father God, this brother have gone out and seek wise counseling from the government, the CDC, on how to protect ourselves. Yeah. He brought those guidelines back to us, the flock. Yeah. Every week he tells us what we must do yeah. according to CDC yeah. and the politicians yeah. mm -hmm. to protect ourselves. Yeah. But most of all, Father God, he teaches us what your son, King Jesus, yeah. said about protecting ourselves. Yeah. For this, yeah. we say thank you so much for him. Father God, we are very aware that he's been ridiculed and talked about. But we know that you're holding him up. Yeah. Yeah. You're guiding him, divine heavenly Father. Yeah. So I pray this special prayer for that brother. Yeah. I pray for his family. I pray for the shepherds here. Well, the families, the deacons, all the teachers, yeah. each and every member. Yeah. We ask that you guide us. Yeah. Oh, righteous heavenly Father, we like to take what we say that has been told to us about the three things that we must do to protect ourselves mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. One, wear a mask. Yeah. Two, wash our hands. Yeah. And social distancing. Yeah. 
Amen. Divine Heavenly Father, but when it comes time mm -hmm. for us to meet in the church, for us to come together, we take number three with the social, social distancing and make it selective social distancing. Mm -hmm. Oh, righteous Heavenly Father, we have a lot to do to help us in the church to return in fellowship yes, yeah. one with another. Yeah. Yeah. The behind heaven the Father who is strong when we help together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we fellowship one with each other. Yeah. I'm yeah. grateful yeah. and I'm thankful yeah. for me to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I thank you so much mm. Yes. For the many blessings that you have blessed us with. Yes, Lord. In the name of your Son. Yes. The only one that can save us from yes, all of this turmoil. Mm. Yes. Jesus the Christ, I thank you. And we ask all blessings in his holy name. Amen. 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 You know that Jesus is, Jesus is the man. Yes, you know my Jesus is, Jesus is the mountain. Yes, you know my Jesus is, yes, Jesus is the mountain. Going where the children is. I'm going where the children is. Don't preach it and tell it today. And you are the 
seated, if you are direct, seated uh, directly behind someone, we want to ask you to take a moment now and, and, and move uh, from directly behind anyone. We have enough space in here uh, so that you, you don't have to be directly behind someone. Move to the middle or move to make sure that there is a bench between you and the next uh, person uh, because the worst place in the world uh, to contract coronavirus is in a building where people are civil to worship the Lord. The news really goes out uh, when that happens. And we have uh, a continued growing number, and we're just thankful for those of you who have determined to come and to share with us uh, in person. I want to say to any who are guests on today, we are thankful uh, that you are here, and we trust that something will be said uh, that will cause you to want to draw that much closer to God. We thank all of our brothers who have participated in the worship service on this morning. Uh, Brother Copeland has done an excellent job on reading and prayer, and uh, to Brother, Brother Wilson's prayer, I just want to say uh, amen to that prayer. I want him to come on up here and finish that service. Amen. <laughs> We're just <laughs> thankful for that and uh, for the special prayer uh, for all of us uh, that God will continue to uh, keep, keep us. For those of you who we have not seen in person for a while, we're glad you're here. We want you to know that although you are here, don't expect anybody to touch you today. Uh, amen. Uh, we are maintaining social, uh, a physical distance from uh, one another, and uh, we, we trust that you have picked up necessary items to keep your area clean, keep your hands clean, uh, and uh, also remember when you are walking in the building to make sure you have your, your mask on. There is no handshaking, there is no hugging, there is no uh, elbow bumping, fist pumping, uh, or any of that. Don't even look at anybody too long. Amen. Uh, we want to maintain uh, that distance. And God, God continues to be good to us through these several months. He has kept us. Uh, there have been a minimal, uh, uh, minimal number of people who have been affected by the coronavirus as far as our fellowship and people we know. Uh, in churches of Christ, and we want to continue to pray for everybody. Y'all doing all right? Uh, Y'all doing all right? Good. And uh, we know there's there's been some changes you've had you've had to make, uh, and uh, some changes you will make. Many of you now are, are acting like this is New Year's Eve. You're promising to go on a diet, uh, but this is uh, this is June now, and uh, just pray that that you'll take care of yourself. We know that uh, things are different right now. They're different. If you mentioned in Bible class, anytime that they're canceling, gone with the wind, things are different. Are they not? Gone with the wind, at least for a little while. Though. And uh, many people won't get to hear that phrase. Frankly, my dear, I don't. Uh, Amen. They won't get to hear uh, that for a while. They, they have canceled cops, been on for over 30 years. I remember even seeing in one church I preached over these 30 years that uh, they were in the city where I was, and one of the members was. Was, was on cops, uh, on the cop side, not on the other side, even, uh, on that, and, and it cast on uh, cops live, police live, but, but I can say that in Bible class, we know that things have gotten serious when they start canceling Paw Patrol, amen. <laughs> Paw Patrol now is getting, getting uh, bad press. Uh, four or five little puppies now, they, they're getting bad press because they're wearing a badge. Uh, and we know these are very serious times, very serious times as the country is trying to make adjustments to a certain mentality that it has had hundreds of years and it doesn't come, doesn't come overnight. Uh, it doesn't come overnight and with all that has occurred, we are surprised and shocked 
to see that things just keep on happening, but things, things don't change overnight. And we have to continue to pray that God's will would be done in this world and uh, two, that God's children would be a source of light in this world. That we would engage the conversation to the extent that we can say what pleases God and what God loves and we can help others uh, in, the, in, this, uh, in these current crises uh, by demonstrating to them that there is peace in the valley, that there is calm in the midst of the storm, there's direction, but there seems like there uh, is no way out, and all of that as a result of who God is. And so we're thankful to God, and we're thankful for all of His children on this morning. To those who may be listening uh, by way of Facebook or, or YouTube, we want you to know we're thankful that you are tuning in. We encourage you to invite others, especially those who are not in Christ Jesus, who have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they might have opportunity to hear about the, the love of God, that, uh, that verse explicated that's on many placards and signs at professional sports gatherings, John 3, 16, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that next verse we say, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might have life. God loves you this morning with uh, an eternal and abiding love. And the Bible says about his love in Romans 5 and 8 that God commends his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Nobody can love you like God does. Did y'all hear me? I want you to know individually, nobody can love you like God loves you. I know your spouse may say a lot of good things to you about uh, how you look, what you do, how they cannot live without you, but nobody can love you like God loves you. Mama can't love you like that. Daddy can't love you like that. Children can't love you like that. If you want to know love, get to know God the Father. His love is an abiding love. It's not an ending love. It's an abiding love. And we're thankful that he loved us enough this morning to wake us up one more time. I'm praying he'll love you enough to keep you awake at least for the next <laughs> few minutes. I, I want to look at a passage from Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Uh, it already been read. I'm going to read it again. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest there's no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women. I like that part. Where it says, multitudes, both of men and women, were added to the Lord. We want you to understand this morning that to be added to the Lord means that one has become part of the body of Christ, has put on Christ. Galatians 3.26 says, we're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. One puts on Christ in baptism. And I know the narrative that is in the world when it comes to religion, and we've seen a very popular descendant of one who had religious influence for decades in this country say to people that if you want a relationship with God right now, that all you must do is pray a prayer, asking God to come into your heart and God would come forgiving you right now of your sins and you can say thank you Father for hearing my prayer. But the text says, the Bible says that when you put a Christ on, you do so by being baptized. In your baptism, the Bible teaches that sins are remitted and that's important because sins are what separate men and women from God. And it's not until we are covered by the blood, Ephesians 1 and 7, that we can have presence with God. Through this pandemic, I don't, I'm not only excited about what the child of God is reminded of, but I'm excited about what the atheist must admit. And even though an atheist may say it's not about God right now, one of the things that he is demonstrating, that she is demonstrating, is that it is about life. Human beings value life. 
Amen. Human beings who of the community and, and a part of the group acknowledge that life is important. And not only do they acknowledge that life is important, the human being who may not acknowledge God at all acknowledges right now that we are in this thing together. That is, we not only recognize life, but we need to do right by one another. Amen. We need to watch out for, for one another. There is life, and we need to be concerned about one another. Now, what we understand he is acknowledging is that there are two things that, that we, we, we start with as foundational to life, and that is God and how we treat one another. Right? He's saying, she's saying, life is important and a relationship with one another is important. The biblical text is saying, you ought to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength, and you ought to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, we extend beyond just saying that there's life. We tell another truth about it. We are not in control of life. Yeah, we, we don't determine when we will have life. And, and if you polled us this morning, we cannot even tell you when we're going to leave here. You go from person to person in this building, but when are you leaving here? And, and there's not a one who can say, on such and such a day, at this time of the day, Tuesday the year, 2024, nobody knows the day of his departure. Life, a relationship with one another, and we are not in control. But there's something controlling things. The earth is revolving around the sun. Something is in control. The sun is shining, keeping us alive. Something is in control. The moon hangs suspended, supreme night. Uh, at night to the something is in control. We want you to understand this morning that it's not something, it's someone. And he is the God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Although I don't know, and I, I don't know when life is going to end, I don't control life, but I know who does. And as long as life is in his hands, everything is going to be all right. That, that's added to the Lord. Add it, add it to the Lord. And before you impress an I am you need to at one time or another in your life. See, honestly, before God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. And I accept his salvific work and acknowledge him as Lord in Christ. Be buried in baptism and you will be added to the Lord. This morning I'm talking about, from this text, thieves, liars, the faithful and evangelists. Thieves. You know what a thief is. And hopefully you haven't been one. <laughs> liars. Now if you don't know what a thief is, I know you know what a liar is. The faithful and evangelists. And I want you to know that the thieves and the liars, the faithful and those who evangelize are all in the church of Christ. Yeah. They are, the, they are these and their lives were not in Christ Jesus, but the truth is the Bible demonstrates that there are thieves and liars in the church. Now, if you've been in the church any, any length of time, you already know that people in the church are not perfect. Amen. That is, people who have uh, confessed the name of Jesus Christ, been buried in baptism, sealed by God's Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1.13. Walking after the Spirit in Galatians 5, 16 and following, these people still need to grow and they will do some things that are wrong from time to time. 
Now, we approached this in the previous hour of saying, by saying to the world, we want you to understand that many of the narratives that you hear about the church are not true. One of those narratives that you hear about the church is that the people in the church believe that they are perfect, that they, they are righteous, they are sanctified, that is, they are above other persons. They, they don't have the tendencies other people have. I want you to understand that uh, those who are in the church on this morning, whomever is listening, that people in the church are not perfect people. We do not assemble under the guise, under the thought that all of us here, or any of us here, is without sin. All of us have done something wrong. And I've paid the world, people who don't attend assembly to the church, they think all of those folks driving into their parking lot and going to church, they're the good people, they never do anything wrong, they speak well all the time, and I can't be a part of them because I don't believe in trying to act like I'm perfect. But you need to understand Walk into an assembly of church folk and you'll see some of the folk you've been hanging with. <laughs> and they are not perfect people. They, 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 they are not perfect. And throughout these in the past three months of listening to the world talk about church and church people, a lot of folks don't know what they're talking about because they haven't been to a church assembly in generations unless they've gone uh, to some kind of event associated with a high school, a graduation, or to a funeral. But many people really don't understand what goes on in an assembly in the church. And so they have to make up a narrative of what they think the church is about. Understand this. We are not here this morning because we are perfect people. Point to the perfect person in this uh, building this morning, and I'll tell you that you have pointed out someone who is not for real. Amen. So, so we don't come here thinking that we're the good folk and everybody else in the world are the bad folk. Morally speaking, there are some people who never attend assemblies who live pretty good lives, don't they? They talk better than church people talk. They don't cuss you out as much as church people cuss you out. Even, 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 even the person who sits at the, in the highest office in the land said he doesn't even drink. A whole lot of church folk drink. Beyond their ability to think straight. We're, we're not saying that people who come to the assembly are, are people who, who don't have any issues. They come to the, the assembly because they acknowledge they have issues. They acknowledge they sin. And they understand that the only remedy for their sins is what God provides through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Another thing I've heard people say out there in the world is that people, when they come to the assembly, those people will get coronavirus because they, they, they do a lot of hugging, they do a lot of kissing, they do a lot of handshaking. And people who don't come to church don't understand that there's some folk who come to the assembly and try their best not to even see the other folk in the <laughs> Come on, somebody. They sit on one side of the building. This is before physical distancing, before social distancing. They've been sitting on that side of the building, on that side of the building, for the last 12 years because that sister didn't put out her big B at the fellowship meal. <laughs> it didn't have anything to do with coronavirus. There are some people in the assembly who have not shaken hands for months, and that is before the present pandemic. And there are others who leave their homes saying to themselves, I wish Sister So and so would try to hug me. It's going to be some stuff. They're going to see the church member wrestle and fight. But they believe that what goes on in this assembly is everybody just hugged up, smoothed, kissing, kissing, shaking hands, and loving on one another. And there are a few who, who do that, but you have to understand, some folk who come together and worship God, when they come, they don't want to think about other folk in this congregation. They're just coming because they acknowledge they need God, and they're hoping God will help them to bridge the gap between them and others before it's all over. Amen. So, no. These are not, the, the people are not at this center because everybody's right thinking all the time. And no, everybody's not here for the beginning, kissing, and shaking hands, and smiling. Amen. That's not what's going on. The people here have acknowledged what we've already acknowledged, that life is precious, that we need one another, 
we're not in control. But we looked for answers and we found God. And we found His Son, Jesus Christ. And we found remedy for sin in the blood of Jesus. And because of who He is and what He's done, we have determined to give Him glory by coming to the assembly and remembering what His Son did in dying on the cross, giving His body and shedding His blood. And we sing around His throne to His glory because He's God and He's in control. But we got some thieves and some liars in the church. Not, not just this church. Not just an evangelical church or a fundamentalist church or a Protestant church or a Catholic church. Wherever you find people, you find imperfection. Let me say that again. Wherever you find people, you find imperfection. Because that's the nature of people. But we, we look to how Jesus, who was perfect, conducted himself. And one of, the, one of the things we must remember is that Jesus comes on the scene and Jesus chooses disciples. And it was seen that when it comes to choosing people to be around, that if anybody would, would know who to choose to be around, it would be Jesus. But you look at who Jesus chooses. First of all, he chooses Peter. Somebody always has something to say. He chooses Peter, who's constantly running his mouth. He chooses Peter, who eventually denied him three times and will curse and swear that he does not know Jesus. Jesus chose a man who was impetuous. You ever try to choose your friends and choose good friends? Just to discover later on they're not so good after all. But Jesus, Jesus chose Peter. He chose two brothers, James and John. James and John were, were brothers. They, and, and, and we said earlier at the earliest service that, that it's always a concern when family people get together in the church because if you ever want to have some, some trouble, go to a family church and you'll find those folks stick together. <laughs> right or wrong. When we were young preachers back in the 70s and 80s and we liked to ask ourselves where we were going to preach while we were students at Southwestern Christian College or perhaps where we would like to preach when we graduated and people would give us the lowdown on the church and they said, well, you know, if they said this, you want to stay away from it. They said, that's a family church. That didn't mean everybody there was loving and kissing and everybody there was going to serve you dinner. What that meant was that if trouble comes, you're going to run up against the brick wall. And when James and John said, remember, when they came upon the city of Samaria, Jesus wanted to go there, and, and the people looked like they wanted to stop him at the board. Amen. That didn't start. And James and John said, Lord, do you want us to call down fire on the city? And, and, and that's rough, but don't think James and John about themselves because they're still church members today who will tell other church members, I hope you burn your left hand when you come into your kingdom. You have to figure out how did Jesus choose two men whose daddy was a thunderous person and whose mama thought they ought to sit on the right and left hand side of the Lord. But not only James and John and Peter, but Jesus chose somebody who lived a profession that was despised. He chose Matthew, remember? Matthew was a tax collector, and many Jews could not stand tax collectors. He chose a Zealot, Zealot, but he also chose Judas. Could not he do any better than that? And we want to ask Jesus, 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 can you do any better than to choose these two brothers, Matthew 10 and 21, Matthew 20, 21? Can you do better than to cho choose Simon, Azela, Luke 6, 15, and despise Matthew, Matthew 10 and 3. Could you not have done better than to choose the show me apostle in Thomas, John 20 and 24? And could you not have done better than Judas? But what we have to realize is that sometimes when you're choosing, you can only choose from what you have. Amen. See, Jesus didn't have any perfect people to choose from. 
everybody he chose was going to be defective. Going to have a fault. Going to have something that did not measure up. And, and, and let me tell you that the point of this message is to say to us that what we have to live with as children of God, one of the points of this message is that we are not here as people who don't have fault or failures or frailties. God called us, but he can only call from whom he had a choice of. He's calling people who all have their issues. Don't you have yours? Well, what you got to be thankful for is that in spite of you and in spite of what problems you may have, God still loves you enough to call you. And you ought to be thankful. That in spite of you, God still wants you to be a part of what he's put together as the greatest manifestation of his love. Here's the other side of that for church members. When trouble comes in the church sometimes, we default to the thought that I thought this place was going to be different from all other places. Well, as long as I am here, it's not going to be any different from all the other places. Because wherever I show up, I make it a little bit like me. Because I am there. The people have used the faults of others when it comes to the church to excuse unfaithfulness to God. What would be the response of members in any century to discover that there were presumptuous, egotistical, selfish, fiery, despised, doubting and untrustworthy persons and the number of those who were saved and added to the Lord. What would people in the world think and how would they respond to a church that had in its fellowship unsavory, even greedy church members? We not only have to deal with the perception of ourselves about ourselves, but the perception of the world about the church. We have to remind them over and over again that we gather, we gather under the name of Jesus Christ. We are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are kept by the love of God. That the power is not in us. All the glory belongs to God. And we believe that God is worthy of glory, honor, and praise for what he continues to do in the lives of men and women. Praise God for how good God is. And we encourage other folk to come and to know God. Now Judas, Judas was a thief before the cross. The text says he was a thief, remember? Because he, he held the bag, he complained when Jesus was anointed with spike on He said this could have been sold and, and, and you got, could have gotten money and given it to the poor. He said this because he wanted money in the bag. And there are some church members even today. When it comes to the money of the church, all they want to know is that the bank account is growing. You don't ever have to do anything good. They just want to know there's money in the bank. They can sleep at night because there's money in the bank. They just want to keep the money for security. Not understanding that whatever you have is never enough unless God puts his hands on it. So we have to trust God to bless what we have as members of the body of Christ. These before the cross. And we can deal with that. People who denied Jesus before the cross, I don't know what man Peter said. God before the cross, unless I see Thomas said the print in his hand before the cross. But you have to understand this morning, every kind of person Jesus had following him before the cross. Jesus has followed him after the cross and even in the church. And I'm saying to church members this morning, young people, older people, you don't abandon your faithfulness to God because of the misdeeds of people who make up the assembly of Christ. There are too many who have excused young people, and middle people, and aged people, and older people for the lack of faithfulness to the church. Making them believe that if they have found faith and phony people in the church, 
that they, that they should not be faithful to the church, that they have an excuse not to be faithful to the church. They have made them believe that because one preacher was not right, or some elders were not right, or some deacons were not right, or some members did each other wrong, or, or that there was some husband that cheated on his wife, or some wife who, uh, who aggravated her husband, or some children who did something wrong, that they're justified in not giving God the glory by staying faithful to the church. And I say to you on this morning, regardless of how people live around us, we still, if we love God, must hear the mandates of God, so that if everybody else goes wrong, we ought to be willing to say, I'll stay with God. And one of the places God puts us is in the assembly. You don't get to hide out at home. You don't get to hide out on a live stream. You don't get to hide out on watching programs on television. You show God glory and honor when you come on in to the assembly of the faith. See, as a child of God, you can only be where it's cool inside. Sometimes you've got to approach the furnace. You can't just be where the sheep are called. Sometimes you have to go where the lions are. You, you, you just can't serve God when everybody can beat their swords and plowshares. Sometimes you've got to mix it up with folk who are still fighting in the heat of the day. As a child of God, whatever God calls us to do, we're willing to do because God is worthy. My neighbor may not be worthy. My spouse may not be worthy. My neighbors may not be worthy. But God has never done any one of us wrong. Has he? Uh, he he's never stopped us from doing what is right. God has never been on our enemy's side. God has always wanted the best for every one of us. Say what you may about church folk, but you can't say it about God. Now, oh, what happened after the cross is we come into a situation where, where the church had some folk in the church who, who were trying to be thieves. And that's what we read this morning from Acts chapter 5. The church was going along just well. The numbers were growing and adding to the church. The, the numbers were multiplying. And you know, when everything's going well, you, you've got to be conscious of this, that, that, that trouble will come. Trouble will come. Just as you get everything together, trouble will come. Some of you have lived long enough to say, I'll be glad when this car is paid off. I won't have any more car. Those cars got paid off and broke down. <laughs> hey, man, you, you lived that long. <laughs> I, I, I'll be glad when I finally get that job. You get that job and some of the most wicked people in the world want the job. You celebrate with the church. I want to thank the church for praying for me. I got a job. It's paying well. Good health benefits, vacation time. I got a good position. That that's one Sunday. Three Sundays later, pray for me. Jesus. That 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 God will move some people. <laughs> I work with no, no. the church was doing well. Barnabas had just sold some. This encouraging brother. And I'm glad the Bible has in it the story of a person like Barnabas who, who made it his business to encourage people. You know there are some people, they always have a word to bring you down with, but Barnabas encouraged people. There are some people who like to magnify your weaknesses, but Barnabas wanted to see your strengths. There are some people who talk about doing well by others, but Barnabas demonstrated that he would do so he sold his land and laid the cost of it at the feet of the apostles in Acts chapter 4. I think there's a story about a husband and a wife who are both in the church. And it's always good, I think, when you have a husband and a wife both in the church. Especially when they're trying to do right. Would have God there all husbands and wives who are in Christ together. But not in Christ to do wrong. Husbands and wives should encourage each other 
to be God and to live God, right? But what happens in religion sometimes is what we will not do in other spheres of life when it comes to religion, we'll, we'll agree to do wrong together. And Ananias and Sapphira, they, they saw the ad adulation, laudation, praise that Barnabas may have received, and they said, you know, we, we have some land and we'll sell it too. And they'll think that we're some real good members because we will have contributed to the progress of the gospel. But Ananias said, oh, wait a minute. That land we're going to sell, the, the market price is $200,000. And uh, we're going to tell the church that, that we sold it for $150,000. So they'll think that we gave the church everything we, we got for the land. And Sophia said, you think we ought to do that, sweetie? <laughs> you think they, they, they won't know we give $150,000? That's enough. Okay, Ananias, big boy, <laughs> whatever you say. And they sold. And Ananias brought that $150,000 and he slapped it down in front of the apostles. We sold our land, here's the money, he expected the praise, and Peter said, you lying. <laughs> Do you know, one of the good things in life, it's not a bad thing in, in, in life, one of the good things in life is that there are people who will correct us from time to time. And we can all stand some correction from time to time. We're living in a period of time, even in the church, that people want everyone to agree with everything they say, whether it is right or wrong. But that's not new. There have always been people who want everyone to agree with they say, whether it is right or wrong. The difference in our day is that both go along with that and nobody wants to question anybody about anything he or she says that's silly and not right. Amen. I can understand that out there in the world, but in the church, we're talking about God and we're talking about doctrine. We're talking about what's right. Sometimes what you say is not right. What I say is not right. And I ought to be able to take the correction that comes from God that's based upon the word of God without giving up my faith because somebody disagreed with me. We try to get together and be so uncomfortable. Everybody trying to agree with everybody. Everybody knows the other person saying something stupid, <laughs> something silly, and something unscriptural. And they're able to just sit there and take it. And I always have to be the one stupid person. That's what I said. Who questions it, but I don't care. Because we can all stand some correction. If you want some while. And everything's not good and better and okie dokie because we agree just to encourage each other in our wrong. Saying wrong stuff, doing wrong stuff, lying on God, unscriptural in our behavior, unscriptural in our teaching, unscriptural in the church, unscriptural in our thought. And we want everybody to agree to say we love each other. If you love somebody, tell them the truth. Tell her the truth, brother. They didn't have much time to consider this because Peter asked, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? You're not lying to us. You're lying to God. And he fell down and gave up the ghost. And so far, did come to church with Ananias this Sunday. She was still putting on her makeup. <laughs> she was still combing her hair. She told Ananias, I'll catch you when I, when I get there. I'm not threat dressed yet. You know, and I, I did, he does like us men do. Can't you get dressed on time? You know what time we're going on? Don't start that, Ananias. I'll get down and just be glad I'm coming. <laughs> so Sapphira walks in all dolled up. Nail did. <laughs> Hands together, not a strand out of place. New fashion on. Heels. Well, she looked good. After all, she had an extra $50,000 to spend. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Peter said, did y'all sell it for $150,000? She said, sure did. <laughs> he asked him, why did you and your husband conspire together to tell this lie? 
Behold, the feet of those who took your husband. Now, this is Acts chapter 5. They're here to take you away also. What if the people in your community heard that some folk had lied to the church and died? Matter of fact, what would happen to this church? <laughs> the people lied and died. You wouldn't have to worry about any physical distance. What, what happens in the church when trouble comes to the church? What becomes my behavior? What becomes my deployment? How do I begin to carry myself? What do I say about the church? Do I say, well, I thought this experiment was going to work with Jesus Christ, but I see now there are big phony and failures in the church, just like out of the church, and if I got to be around these kind of folk in the church, I might as well stay out there in the world. The covers have been pulled back. The gig is up. I don't want to come to church anymore. I don't want to be there with those hypocrites. Is that what they said? In Acts chapter 5, no. They did not do like we do. And say that because I discovered there was a thief in the church and a liar in the church, that I'm through with the church. And there's, there's a reason for that. One cannot remain committed to what one was not committed to in the first place. So a lot of folks are just in the assembly to get what they can get out of it, but they're not really in the assembly to commit something to the assembly. To sacrifice for the assembly. To be there with the assembly. Some folk are going to come to the assembly as long as it benefits them and doesn't cost them much. But as soon as it costs them reputation, as soon as it costs them standing up for what is right, as soon as it costs them looking like they're committed to God for real, as soon as it costs them a few friends here and there, they are ready to abandon the church. And churches are weak all over this country. As preachers and leaders, elders and deacons, members try to pacify people mm. who are really not being committed to God in the first place. Amen. And they hate when I say stuff like that. Who are you to say? Who, 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 who are you to say they're not committed to God in, in the first place? Well, let's say that they're not taught right about what it means to be a child of God. Yeah. See, as a child of God, you hold on let come and go. What man? As a, as a child of God, when everybody else sits down on God, you continue to stand for God. As a child of God, you don't quit when there are contrary winds. And the winds are no longer at your back. As a child of God, you don't doubt that God can do everything God says he will do. Your trust and your confidence is in God. You're honest enough to admit you don't have all of the answers and that you need answers that come from God. As a child of God, you admit that sometimes it's uncomfortable. But as uncomfortable as it is, you're going to stay with God. As a child of God, you're going to acknowledge that there's a Peter on one side, there's a James and John in front of you, a Thomas on the other side, and a Judas at your back. But you're going to stay with God. Anyhow. And it's never a pretty thing, it's never a pleasant thing. When there is trouble in the church. But the message is this morning, don't let the trouble chase you. Don't let the trouble cause you to let go of the only hope you have. Don't let the trouble make a hypocrite out of you. And I've tried to say that we've got to hang in there. When circumstances are not right, we've got to hang in there. When leadership is not right, we've got to glorify God and hang in there. When members don't treat us right, amen, we got to do like we do on the job and ask for some prayer and keep going. How would you look warm from job to job every time somebody did something to you you didn't like or said something on the job you didn't like to be broke and in trouble? And sometimes the weakest place people want to be is in church. 
And this ought to be the place where we're the strongest. Another thing here in the text, the Bible says when, when Ananias and Sapphira, Brother Coburn reminded me the other this morning, that died, the Bible says, folk got scared to get associated with the church. <laughs> the Bible says they didn't dare to join themselves to the church. But here's the other thing. Verse 14. Believers were the more added to the Lord. In the midst of trouble, even when the church is not getting good press, the word of God can go out. Find an honest soul. And that honest soul will recognize that God has done something for me I cannot do for myself. And in the midst of the midnight trouble, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the pandemic, that person will say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I want to be a child of God even today. Don't make you, don't let the devil make you think that when trouble comes, the church can't grow. There are a lot of people who have hoped that the church wouldn't grow through troubled times. But I believe the gospel still has the power. And I want to say to you this morning, today is the day of salvation. I know in some religious fellowships, First Sunday of the month is the day of salvation. Or the summer is the day of salvation. But every day you wake up is an opportunity to obey God. If you're not in Christ Jesus today, you can obey the gospel of Jesus Christ today. But what do I need to do, preacher? You need to make sure you've understood a message that needs to be heard. What's that message, preacher? God loved you enough to sit his very best when you were at your word, very worst. But we killed him. We put him on the cross. And you need to hear that although we put him on the cross, God raised him from the dead. And that he ever lives. He's alive right now. To make intercession for you and for me. You've got to believe that. Believing that gospel, you have to be willing to give your life to God in repentance. Don't live like you want to live according to your own thinking, but live as God has directed us to live. Be willing to confess before others that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you do that, we can baptize you into Christ today. Yes. And you'll be a child of God today. Even with all this trouble around us, you can be a child of God today. You may run into a thief every once in a while. You may run into a liar every once in a while. But thank God for the faithful who keep on preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you get this morning, you're not a child of God. You can come right now as together we stand and sing an invitation song. If you need prayer, come right now as together we stand and sing. There's a fountain free. It is for you and me. Let us face, oh, haste to the brink. There's a fountain of love from the source.
she was young. She was only in her 30s. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask prayer for the Howell family. Her name uh, is Christy Julianne, and she, uh, it's hard for me sometimes. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to really get to be close to her, or know her, because, um, you know, she was raised in California, and that's where um, her family and, and my uncle lived most of uh, her life. So I didn't get a chance to get to know her as well as I would have liked, but it's, it's still hard uh, losing someone close to you, a family member. But I just like for the church to please keep the family in prayer in this time of bereavement. Let us pray. We come today, Father, with action now that you be with the Howell family and the loss of their loved one. Father, we ask you now that you comfort the family as only you know how. Father, we continue to give you praise and honor, and we know that you're the great comfort. And Father, we thank you for your blessing upon each and every one of us. We thank you for your blessing about how you are protecting each and every one of us even this, in this time of torment. So Father, we ask you now, and we thank you now for all that you continue to do. Mm -hmm. We ask this prayer in the Son of Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> we come to the bottom of our service, which is offering. Scripture reference can be found in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, the sixth and the seventh verse, and it reads, But this I say, he will sow sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. He will sow a bountifully, shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according to his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And at this time, we'll give her the opportunity to give. No tears in heaven, no sorrows given, all will be glory in that land. There'll be no sadness, all will be gladness, when we shall join a happy man. No tears, don't you know there'll be no more tears, tears of death, sorrow, Your son's body. Your fear that is taken, Lord, in the mountain of sweet and suffering in thy sight. 
In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shared for many for the remission of sin. Let us pray for the cup. Then we Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this cup that was spread with us, your son, she had in love. We pray that it's taken in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable in our sight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we always pray. Amen. At this time, members, please go out to attendance forms and pass it to the two center aisles, and us will pick them up at this time. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved, because I'm an anchor in Jehovah. I shall not be moved, just like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Put your mask on on the way out uh, and uh, have a great 
uh, Sunday and continue to pray uh, for the world and for the people of God. Amen. If nothing else, consider yourselves dismissed.